Hey, what's up guys? I'm Coach Besaw, and today I'm gonna go over my favorite pass concept in the spread offense. Now, the concept here that I'm gonna show is the snag concept, and I think what you're gonna see is probably gonna be different than how other coaches out there are running snag. And I really like the way that we do it. I'm not saying that it's better, uh, but I really like it because of the nice big open windows that we're able to create because of how we're distributing the routes within the formation. So let's just jump right into it and stay tuned. Check out the snag concept that I've got for you guys. Okay, coach, so we're going to go over snag and I've got it drawn up with the three by one formation. That's how we like to get to it, although we can get to it in many different ways. Uh, but this example right here, um, the, the, I think the main difference from the way that we do it compared to maybe other coaches out there that are doing it is actually the snag route itself and how we're spotting up uh, in the grass. And so I, I think what most coaches are doing is when they run the snag, they're taking that guy, if it's number one or two or maybe both, and they're putting him kind of at an angle and just running him 45 degrees to spot up. So I, I see a lot of coaches doing that. Um, so that is a little bit how we differ when we run our snag concept. So with our snag concept, um, we take number one and he's going to be the guy that's running the snag sitting up in that intermediate area. Number two for us is going to clear out and he's running a corner. Okay. So we're at about eight to 10 yards and we're running a corner and we're trying to really clear out for our number one receiver who is going to be running that snag route. Number three for us. He's running a bubble. So if we're starting in three by one, he's running bubble. He's occupying the flat. Okay. Now the, with number our number one receiver here, the reason why we don't have him just run 45 in and straight to a spot is because we want our number two receiver to get vertical and really push this overhang defender. But we really want him to clear out so we can kind of get a little bit of a rub action from our number one receiver when he kind of spots up and sits in the grass. So with our number one, what we do is we actually get him and we take him vertical and he's going vertical for about six yards. Okay. The goal here, the idea here is to get this corner. We want him to always feel like we're going vertical. Okay. It's it, for us, it's always a go route until it's not. So we want him to feel like he's going vertical. So we're going to push him for six yards, hopefully get him into a pedal and then we're going to plant we're going to plant with our outside foot. We're going to come across at two yards and then we're going to kind of spot up right in this area right here. So we should get some sort of the number two going over the top and then we're going to spot up just underneath him. Okay. Uh, and so for us, we, we really like this again because it clears things up. We get the corner. If he's playing man, we're hopefully getting him out of his pedal uh, and hope maybe turning his hips a little bit, but we're, we're, we're attacking hard off the line of scrimmage for six yards, getting across at two, and then we're going to spot up. Okay. So for us, the reads are just like probably how most people would be doing this is one, two, three. Okay. So we're going to, uh, we're going to look at the corner first. Okay. So quarterback on his third step, if he likes throwing the corner, he'll throw it. We're reading this area here. We're not really reading a defender, but we're reading space. So if this free safety plays over the top and he closes that window on us, then we're going to come down to our, our second read in the progression. Okay. If it's the corner that pedals out, okay. And they're playing some type of quarters, uh, or he bails, then he is going to, uh, again, come off his first progression and then come down to his second read in the progression. Okay. So if this window is closed, then we move on. If not, our quarterback is throwing it on our, on his third step. And he's hitting that corner route. To be honest with you, though, we don't always, we, we, we don't really hit this route that often because this is a big play for us. And we, I, I really like hitting the stag, snag. So uh, sometimes I don't want to waste throwing the ball on that corner, which is a little bit harder of a throw for a quarterback when this guy for us is just open almost all of the time. The reason why he's open so much is because we get this vertical clear up from number two. If this overhang defender wants to hang on to number two for a little bit, uh, we're allowing we're allowing that to happen because we're getting vertical here. So we're not immediately just running to coverage right away and sitting here. So we're going to clear out, and then as soon as the overhang sees three to the flat, 
Okay, as the curl flat defender in this instance, okay, he can't get out leverage, so he's going to reroute, and then he's immediately going, and he's going to take away the flat. Okay, so we've used our receiver here, our number three receiver. We've put him into the flat to take him away from the play. Okay, this guy is more of our check down. If one and two aren't there, then we'll check it down and throw the bubble into the flat. Okay, so as the overhang goes to the flat, at that time, usually what's happening is our number one receiver is getting out of that last, out, out of this second stem of his route, and he's starting to spot up kind of right in this area right here. So he's gone, he's running to the flat, and then we're coming directly inside of him. All right, so one's not open. Boom, we get our eyes down here. He immediately vacates to the flat with the bubble, and then we throw it right behind him and we hit him on the snag route there, okay? The one, I guess the main adjustment, the main coaching point for this is knowing, uh, is having your number one receiver understand, you know, the possible defenders that can take this uh, away from, from him, okay? So it's gonna be the overhang defender. We're assuming that he's clearing out Okay, but the next defender that can take that away is going to be that linebacker. So we really have to have our number one receiver understand kind of where the structure of the defense is and where these guys are at uh, pre-snap. Okay, if he's tucked into the box, okay, well then maybe we have an idea that we might be spotting up a little bit uh, farther outside. If he's if he's hipped, okay, then we, we got to kind of keep our eyes on him a little bit as we get into our routes because if he's going to play a little bit more outside of this. And as we start to snag up right here, and he flies out to take the, the, the hook curl uh, window away from us, then what we have to do is we have to adjust, and we come just inside of that, and we move so that we don't sit next to coverage, okay? So our number one receiver is really looking here to here as far as where does he sit in the open grass, okay? If the backer is aggressive to the, curl, to the hook curl, and he's widening, getting width right away, well, we don't want to sit next to coverage, so we'll sneak just inside of him. If he sits here, not really aggressive, and we've got that big, nice big window because he vacates to the flat, then we're going to spot up and kind of keep ourselves away from him and spot up more outside, so that way we don't sink in and we don't move to coverage there. Okay, so that's kind of how we run our snag. That is how we run our snag concept when we get into the three by one. Again, I think it's just a little bit different because we're not taking our one and immediately running him uh, right to the coverage with that 45 in in. Okay, we're allowing number two to clear things out for us. We're getting vertical as well, trying to push that corner off of us. Uh, in case he's playing man, we want to get him and create some separation, get him out into a pedal, uh, and then we're going to really come underneath that corner and spot up into the open grass. On the backside, for us, we just run a five-step glance. Okay, so we'll put him on a backside post. And this is, you know, one, it's an alert for us. So pre-snap, for whatever reason, if we like it, we throw it. If not, we, we work to our progression there. Okay, we can also do this out of a, a bunch set to the field um, where we put two on and three and one are off. Okay, same concept for us. Most of the time when we get this, we see probably something like that. So he might may press the point there. And it's really important that our receivers here uh, work at their get-offs so that they are not getting jammed up, jammed up at the line. Okay, and we do a pretty good job of that. But uh, if you are struggling with that, if you have a hard time, maybe your receiver takes a little bit longer getting off this line with the press, then what you can coach up with your number one, knowing that he's going to get pressed up, okay, and he's got to be able to, to relieve that pressure, restack, and then get into the corner, take your number one receiver, and instead of having him get immediately into his stem, well, he can start working outside a little bit, get a little bit of an outside release. He's not getting any pressure from the corner. This little bit of outside release, maybe for three steps, can alleviate that press that the number two is going to see from the overhang. Okay, Kind of buys him a little bit of time. So just a little bit outside, Okay, maybe one, two, three, then we're up to six over at two, and then we're gonna snag up right there. And again, we're gonna get the bubble from three. Now, when we're in the bunch set, again, we still need to keep our eyes right here, okay? One to two for our number one receiver. If he's fast to cover the hook curl, then we're gonna sit just inside of him, okay? If he sits right here, 
for whatever reason he's not aggressive to the outside, then we're going to sit up and then we're going to continue to work away from coverage. So as he works out, okay, and as he continues to work out, well then we want to work just a little bit away from coverage so that we've got a nice window for our quarterback to be able to throw to. Okay, so whether you like it out of a uh, three by one bunch set, uh, this is the way that I like to run snag in our offense. And we hit this number one receiver, I would say nine times out of 10. Corner route is nice, uh, but it's hard to throw that route and pass up something that we feel like is gonna come open most of the time. So um, if you guys run it differently, I'd love to hear from you. A bunch of different ways that you can run snag. Again, I'm not saying that this is the best way and the only way. I'm just saying I really like this concept and we're successful with it. So I figured if you guys aren't doing it, maybe you might want to take a look at it, see what it looks like in your offense. Uh, and I think if you do give it some time, you guys will be successful too. So thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, again, if this video was helpful to you, you like learning more about the spread, please give it a thumbs up. Also hit subscribe below and then tap the bell right next to it. That way you guys can get notified next time I come out with a video. Uh, until then, thanks guys. I appreciate all your support. It means a lot. Uh, and continue to play fast, score fast, and run the spread.